I'm servicing my classic British car and I realize I'm missing a bolt. Well, I can't just simply call the auto parts store and say, sell me a bolt because they're going to ask me some questions and I don't have the answers. So let's see if we can figure out what we need to know. What we need to know is the size of the bolt. We're going to find out in a minute that all bolts are designed or, or designated by their thread size. And we're going to cover that in just a moment. But first, we need to understand when they were building these cars, they have teams of engineers building these cars, they would lay out the details knowing that they were going to need lots of nuts and bolts and screws to build this car. And instead of actually making a spec sheet for every single nut and bolt and screw in this car, they said, you know what? We're going to use this bolt right here, but this same bolt will probably work over there and over there and over there and over there and over there. In other words, the same bolt can be used throughout the car. That's going to help us immensely. Let's imagine that I'm missing a bolt. Okay, It's there on my manifolds, there where my transmission bell housing meets the back of my motor. It's there on my differential. It's right there. And I say, well, you know what? Just to the left of that or just to the right of it, there's another one. And it looks the same. It's doing the same job on the same part. It's probably the same bolt. So what you do is go to one of the ones that's there already, take it out, and offer it to the hole that's missing one. If it fits, this is probably a sample of exactly what you need. That's great. Now, when you call the auto parts store, you can say, I need a bolt, and I know what it looks like, and they're going to say, what size is it? And that's where the challenge comes in. It's not hard, but it's a little different. So let's see if we can attack this problem. This is a thread identification chart. It's sized by its threads, and that's what they want to know. This chart, you can download these from the internet, so it's easy to get your hands on. And let's see if we can use this chart to figure out what we're working with. I'm going to go down here to the first thing she's asking for, and on the top left is this basic major diameter. What does she want? She doesn't want the space at the cap up here or the head. She doesn't want this part up here. She wants the space, the outside diameter of the threads. So I take my, my calipers, and it says 0.369. I'm going to round that to 0.37. Now, I've got an American thread here. I'm going to show this to you in a minute. I'm going to show you a metric. We're going to do it twice. And we're working with the American. So under basic major diameter, and it's 0.37, I've got 0 0.31, 0 0.31, 0 0.35, 0 0.37 is right there. There it is. And it's in this box with these two other sizes. So let's keep this in mind. I'm going to follow this across over to where the American sizes are. And now, before it said major diameter, now it wants nominal diameter. What is that? Well, nominal means how we call something, the name of something. It has the same root word as the word name or nomenclature in English. If you speak a little Spanish, nombre means name. Okay, so it's nominal. But what makes nominal a special word is that when something is nominally something, it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be true. And a person might ask, how can you have a name for something that isn't exact or isn't true? Well, go out in the garage and get a 2 by 4 Offer it to somebody and say, what size is this 2 by 4 And they're going to say, is this a trick question? It's not. A 2 by 4 is 1 and 1 half by 3 and 1 half. It's not 2 by 4 Nominally, it's 2 by 4 In other words, we call it a 2 by 4 So these sizes here are all called a 3 8 bolt. Okay, great. That's the first part. We've got it. It's easy. We understand that. Now, some people will then go and get what's called a thread gauge. This one has 50 or 60 little gauges inside. They say, I need to know how many threads per inch because it says threads per inch. And they'll start with one and two and they'll go one and two and three and keep changing them over and over until they finally find one that fits. You don't have to do that. It's a waste of time. Let's see something on the chart. Beside the 3 8 bolt, it's got three sizes, 16 threads per inch, which is UNC, Unified National Course, or Course Threaded 3 8 24 threads per inch is a UNF, Unified National Fine, and 32 threads per inch. We don't see many of these. This is Unified National Extra Fine. Okay, I've taken, because I already know what this is, a 16 threads per inch thread gauge, and I'm going to put it against the bolt, and when I do, it fits perfectly. It goes right in there like a hand in a glove. That's the size of this. See how nicely it fits. It's perfect. Okay, now I have a 3 8 by 16 bolt. That's the name of this bolt. Okay, that's real fine. So we call up the auto parts store and say, I need a 3 8 by 16 bolt. He says, we can do that. He said, how long is it? Okay, how long is easy. Ignore the cap or the head. And what you want to do is just take your ruler and from the underside of the cap to the end measure it. This is 2 inches. Okay, and then he says, is it threaded all the way? And you say, well, no, actually, it's threaded about an inch and a quarter. There it is. 
It's a 3 8 by 16 bolt, 2 inches long, and 1 inch and 1 and quarter inches of it is threaded. That's all there is to it. You've got it. Now, what about metric? Is there any secret to metric? Well, let's go back again. It says the major diameter. We're going to do the same thing, except this time we measure it in millimeters. Take my, my, cal my calipers here, and I'm going to change them to millimeters. Put it on here. It says 9.82 millimeters. You see it right there, 9.82. Uh, down here, I'm in the millimeter list now, 7.9, 8-point nothing, 9-point nothing, 9.5, 9 9.7, 10, 9.82 will be right in here. It's in this block. So, we're going to come across, and again, it says nominal diameter. Okay? They're doing the exact same thing. They're not calling it all these different sizes. This is a 10-millimeter bolt. See how fast we did it? We know what we're looking for. It's a 10-millimeter bolt. And again, we don't have to try 50 or 60 different thread gauges to find out which one it is because 1.5 pitch in millimeters is a coarse. 0.75 pitch is fine. 0.1, excuse me, 1 is, fi is still fine. A 1.25 is coarser, but it's still fine. But somebody said, wait a minute, over here you said threads per inch and now you're talking about pitch. What's pitch? If we look at the bolt from the side, you've got these grooves here where the threads are. If you go from the top of one of the threads to the very top of its next door neighbor, that distance is the pitch. We measure it in millimeters. So then, what it's saying here is on the coarse one, it's one and one half millimeters, or a millimeter point, 1.5, from one to the next. And they change like that. So we're going to take, I've got, I already know what it is. This is a 1.25. I've got the gauge. And again, I'm going to stick it right on there. And this is a fine thread. It's a pretty coarse fine thread, but this is a fine thread. So, what is it? It's a 10 by 1.25. It's metric. It's easy. You call the store and they say, okay, I need a 10 by 1.25 bolt. They say, that's easy. How long is it? We measure the shank. We're in metric, so we stick with millimeters. Come along the side. It's 50 millimeters long. Is the whole thing threaded? It is. We have exactly what we need. We've done two of them. The second one was really fast. Once you've done it, it's really easy to do. Now, a person might say, well, I've lost a nut. Do I do the same thing? Well, in one sense, yes. Nuts and bolts are measured the same way. They're measured by the thread count that's in them. 3 8 by 16 or 3 8 by 24, uh, 10 millimeters by 1.5 or 10 millimeters by 1. Okay, that's it. That's fast. But the problem is in measuring it because the major diameter, for example, in this bolt from the outside to the outside is going to be the interior diameter here, and my calipers will not get in there to get that. It, even if they did, if I had the tool in my hand and I'm trying to see, you can't see in there. I'm looking in from the back and I can't see if it fits right. There's a much easier way. If I've got a stud where I'm missing a nut and the nut I know fits on right there, use the stud for your computation because the size of the stud is based on the size of the threads. The size of the nut is based on the size of the threads. It's the same thing. Metric, we're going to do the exact same thing. Now, a person might say, okay, I understand. But I'm a little confused because I want to do this, but a caliper like this can cost some money, or a thread gauge like this can cost some money, and I don't want to spend a lot of money to figure out how to size one bolt. You don't have to. Let's try something. I picked this tool up at a big box home improvement center, and this is our 3 8 bolt, and it's got a series of holes for different sizes. And I'm going to take, we know this is a 3 8 bolt, and I'm going to try to put it in the 5 16 hole. It won't fit. M8 stands for 8 millimeters. It won't fit. There's a 3 8 hole. It fits. How about that? How about the metric one? Well, let's try it again. We know this is an M10 or a 10 millimeter. It won't fit here. It won't fit here. It won't fit there. It fits here. For less than $2, I know the diameter of this bolt. So we're good there. But how about counting the threads? Well, let's start with this one here. This is our 3 8 16. All I have to do is put my ruler against the size of the bolt and count 16 threads per inch. That's easy enough to do. But I'll tell you a secret. This technician can't do that. This technician's eyes will never, in my whole life, I've never been able to follow something like this. I'll get up two, three, or four, and I'll lose count and I have to start all over again. I don't know where I was. Unless I mark these with a marker, I don't know how many there are. But what I can do is, let's just say I, mess, I measured it, and I'm wrong. Let's just say I, I get 15 threads or 17 threads. Remember, there are only a few sizes. If I get 15 or I get 17 and the size is 16, that's what it is. I made a mistake. That's it. It's real easy. 
If I say, oh, I don't want to be working so hard, I want to do it the lazy man's way, I can measure half inch and measure the threads in a half inch. If I've got eight threads in a half inch, it's 16 threads per inch. For a millimeter, very similar. We go to the millimeter side, you find one of the threads, get a good measure on one of the threads, and take a look at the distance to the next thread. If it's exactly one millimeter, then it's 10 by one. If it's a little less than a millimeter, it's going to be 10 by 0.75. You see how it works. It's real easy, it's real straightforward. Now on the subject, of, uh, another point that we can cover, you've been working on the car and then you reach down there and you realize that one of these bolts right here, I don't have a socket or a wrench that will fit this. How in the world do I know what it is? I have to go down and buy one so I can finish working on the car and I don't know the size. Well this is our, let's start with a metric one. I'm going to measure across, we measure from one flat side to the other. This is called measuring across the flats. And when I go like that, I get 13.87 millimeters. This calls for a 14 millimeter wrench. It's just that easy. If I convert to American sizing, and again, I go across the flats. This one's coming in at 0.55 inches. 0.56 is 9 sixteenths. It's just that easy. So if you run across a bolt and you don't know what size wrench goes on, you can't find the wrench in your box, measure across the flats and you have your size. For example, sometimes on the end of the crankshaft, there's that pulley, there's a big bolt in there. What size is that? That's how you figure out the size. Okay. And the last thing about these is that notice these marks on the top. These tell us that this is not just a regular bolt. This is graded. It's because it's been hardened to do a special job. And these three marks in this particular one tell the guy at the auto parts store this is a grade 5 bolt. So if you have a bolt and it's got marks, make sure they replicate that for you. So what have we learned today? We learned that our bolts are named by the thread size. Whether they're American Standard or metric, it makes no difference. We've learned that nuts are made by the exact same system. So the 3816 bolt and the 3816 nut use the same name. We've learned that if you need a thread size chart, they're on the web. It's easy to get. We've learned that American bolts are measured in threads per inch. We learned that metric is measured in what's called thread pitch, which is the distance in metric from the tip of one screw thread right here to the tip of its next door neighbor. We learned that the shank, or the length of the bolt, is from under the head all the way to the end. And we've learned that we can do this with inexpensive tools. We learned we can figure out what size wrench we need if we don't have it. And we've learned that bolts are graded. So knowing these things, you can easily find out what bolts you need if you've ever lost one.